we have yet another prospect promotion to discuss up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Wednesday, June 21st. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's get into it. Gavin Williams will be called up by the Guardians on Wednesday to make his debut against the Oakland A's. Why is this happening? Tristan McKenzie shut down from throwing for, quote, several weeks due to a UCL sprain in his right elbow. Gavin Williams, a former first-round pick back in 2021. Great numbers in the minors this season, Scott. 47% rostered. Does he automatically catapult over names like Emmett Sheehan and A.J. smith Chauver? I would say yes. Uh, closer with Emmett Sheehan, who, uh, of course, had an incredible minor league season before getting called up in his debut. He threw six no-hit innings against the Giants, so we're pretty high on him right now, I would say. But Gavin Williams is a higher caliber of prospect. His minor league track record is... Pretty much unimpeachable. Uh, he's been nothing but great since being drafted. And I would say, uh, well, I would have said he was the best remaining pitching prospect in the minors when you're, once Yuri Perez got called up. But since then, Grayson Rodriguez got sent down. So the point is, Gavin Williams is a really high-end pitching prospect. And if I did have one hesitation uh, in terms of how he's going to perform right away, it's that he was walking a lot of guys at AAA. Started out great at AA, wasn't walking anybody in three starts. 4.1 walks per nine during his nine starts at AAA. Still had a 293 ERA, still had 11.9K per nine. Guy with a big fastball. He's had no trouble missing bats in the minors, and I think that's the most exciting thing about Gavin Williams. And then, of course, something else that distinguishes him from Emmett Sheehan is we know he has a lot of runway here because of Tristan McKenzie's injury, which is severe enough that they're not talking about it being a season ender yet, but you could definitely see it becoming a season ender. I think Gavin Williams, if he pitches well, he will for sure stick in the Guardians rotation. All right, let's stick with the pitchers and move over to the waiver wire. Reed Detmers, one of his best starts of the season, up against the Dodgers, seven shutout innings with eight strikeouts and 11 swinging strikes. And Ranger Suarez just keeps rolling. That's now five straight quality starts. He was up against the Braves, six innings, one run, Seven strikeouts there. Scott, who would you rather have, Reed Detmers or Ranger Suarez? Well, I I do think Detmers has the more upside of the two, but that's been true all along, and he's been pretty useless all along. This was his best start of the season, his first and the first time he went seven innings, but only the third time he's gone even six innings, and that's been Reed Detmers' biggest issue, though he's getting a ton of whiffs has a 14% swinging strike rate, just so inefficient, too many walks and not giving enough length to, to win games. He has only one win on the season. So he just, he's just been useless in fantasy Reed Detmers, even though the upside is plain to see the stuff is good, all of that. So I'm going to say Ranger Suarez. He just seems more, he just seems like he has more fantasy utility. And obviously he's been on a nice run here. Uh, for the Phillies, last five starts, a 138 ERA, 104 whip, 8K per nine. Obviously, he's not going to sustain those numbers, but he is giving you length. He has shown the ability to suppress runs in the past. He's a good ground ball pitcher, and he's made some changes to his arsenal, uh, changing the location of his sinker and um, featuring a curveball more that's helping him get a few whiffs as well. So I would prefer Ranger Suarez to Reed Detmers, even if the upside is kind of middling. All right, let's wrap up with one more pitcher. Yuri Perez was fantastic on Tuesday. Six shutout innings with nine strikeouts and 19 swinging strikes up against the Blue Jays. He has a 154 ERA and a 1.0 whip. Scott, would you be looking to shop or trade Yuri Perez in redraft leagues right now with the fear of an innings shutdown at some point? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a bad idea. To, it's never a bad idea to shop a pitcher who you think is coming up on an issue of some kind, whether it's innings or whatever else. But I just don't know how successful you're going to be in this case because Yuri Perez, you know, you mentioned how good the ERA, the whip, <laughs> the whiff rate on basically all of his pitches. It's amazing. You could definitely see the talent here from Yuri Perez, but this was only his second start going six innings. 
And so I'm just not sure the impact in fantasy has been enough that people really be salivating to, to get him and, and to pay enough to make it worth your while. Because for however long he's available, he should be great. And I don't think we're going to run into an issue just because teams have basically gone away with this approach where uh, there comes a point in like August or whatever where they just hit the brakes on Yuri Perez and he's done and you might as well drop him because he's not going to pitch again. I think they're going to be a little more nuanced in ways they reduce his innings, maybe shutting him down around the all-star break, having him fire it back up in the second half. And they'll want to... They want to make sure he pitches as late into the season as possible. So I, I think you're probably better off holding on to him. Never hurts to shop, though. All right, let's wrap up there. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 